Okay, so uh, what I want to add to the project is the ability for the user to get in contact with me, the developer, um, as a way to, to be open to communication with my customers. Uh, one way is for them to be able to send me an email uh, via the app. So we're going to set up a plugin uh, that has various features, and one of the features is to send an email through the app, initiated through the app. This is that plugin that I started to mention sometime last week. Uh, remember that plugin by Eddie Verbruggen, that social sharing plugin. It has the ability for us to send uh, a tweet from our uh, project or post to Facebook and such and has the ability uh, to set up to send an email to us as you know a developer to get in contact with us so that's what we're gonna set up here let's go online and search for Cordova social sharing plugin this briefly when we were first touching on the concepts of Cordova in that it gives us access to uh, an API to connect with the deep levels of the device so uh, click on the first result it should take you to github As I mentioned previously, there are so many great plugins out there to make your project uh, better and better. And a lot of these people put them out, and we're grateful. But I would also recommend to think about donating even a few dollars, maybe for a pizza or something, for their hard work to make your app better. And so uh, this has got a bunch of explanation and description of how it works. We looked at this briefly and we're going to use the feature about um, sending an email. But the first thing we need to do is install it. So scroll down and we're going to find the section of installation, section 3, <coughs> and its particular plugin ID should be listed here. Cordova-plugin-x-social sharing. We need that, copy and paste it. We need that so that we can paste it into our project to activate this plugin. Back in Visual Studio, let's open config XML. Plugins tab at the left, and then custom. So here in our config XML file, we're going to add a plugin, a custom plugin, and the one by the developer Eddie Verbruggen. So we have its ID. Cordova-plugin-x-social sharing. Click that little arrow for it to connect to the server so that we can confirm that's the plugin we want. On the right side, it should then say, this is the social sharing, version 518, etc. Share text images, etc. Add it.
Okay, so if you added that plugin, you can confirm that it's in the installed view. These are the plugins that are there so far. Social sharing is right there. You can close the config XML file, and then let's open index.html. In the project, I want to create a button that says, uh, contact us, or contact the developer or reach out to us or whatever. We want to create a button in the About screen that'll initiate uh, sending an email to us, the developer. So let's go find the About screen. Once we are dealing with hundreds of lines of code, I really recommend you get used to Control F to find. You can scroll and scroll through your project, sure, but with Control F, I find it so useful to jump to the right line of code if you kind of know where you need to go. We have that about screen. What's one possible way for me perhaps to quickly find the about screen? If you type about. I might have the generic word about in more than one place. What about PG about? I guess we didn't call it PG about. We called it PG info or options. config, maybe? Options? PG options, yep. So I was thinking of about also, but it was PG options. So if you kind of know what keyword to, to search, uh, even like halfway the word, it doesn't have to be complete, PG opti should be enough, hopefully, that it jumps me down to the right place, PG options. So the control F, I find it so useful for me to jump to the right spot. You saw, you kind of saw it a moment ago when I was talking about prevent default. I wanted to show you we did already prevent default somewhere. So I did control F to find that little block of code, and I found it to show you. So under PG options, which is approximately line 104, this is where we've got our section PG options, our headers called options. There's our main article, stuff. Again, you probably, this is where you created a picture, added some text, mine is just plain, basic. We've got a log out button. Above the log out button, line 110, we're going to create a new button. So basically the same way, a tag, href, pound, data role, button, data icon. We have an icon called um, mail, M-A-I-L. Question? This is the index.html, the HTML file. an ID BTN contact close that it's going to be a, a link upgraded to a button using that icon with an ID to reference it via JavaScript and in between the A tags we can say something like contact us So here's a secret. Even if you are one person in your in your app design company, you can you, you can say us or we. It makes you sound big and fancy, and you've got a lot of people on your team. So that they can pay those 99 cents. So here um, we've got a contact us button. It doesn't go anywhere, but we need it to behave like a button, so it's got a dummy link there. It doesn't go anywhere. We've got our data dash attributes for jQuery mobile so that it gets upgraded in an icon. I'm going to save that. And then the hard part, or the heavy lifting, not that hard, but the heavy lifting, happens in the JavaScript file. So we'll jump back to the JavaScript file.
go back to the JavaScript file. Remember, they're all named index, index CSS, index JS, index HTML. So we'll just see the HTML file, the JavaScript file, or the CSS file. Let's go back to index.js. Inside of the onDeviceReady function, because it's Cordova related, we've got at the end of that, at about 163, we've got our area where we've got these event listeners. We've got the submittal of the form for signing up and logging in. We've got then our log out uh, event handler. So after that, we're going to set up for that button. Now we don't have an object for that button, perhaps. Yeah, we hadn't created it yet. So uh, if we back up first to where we've got our variable definitions, we've got the variable for L form signup. This is about line 28. We've got L form signup, L form login, L form user, L BTN logout. We need a button uh, element for uh, that button BTN contact. So I'm going to add a new one right after that. Dollar LBTN contact is equal to the jQuery selector quotes pound BTN contact comma at the end because it's a list of variables. Now we've got an object representing the HTML node in the HTML file that we can call upon in JavaScript. So once we've got that um, object, we can then go back to our section where we've got our event listeners and set up on the event of a click of L button contact, we run some function like function contact, then we define function contact. And based on the specification, the documentation of the social sharing plugin, we will send an email, an email to us. So back where we've got all of the event handlers down there, line 164, now we've got L, btn contact dot on, click, comma, fn, um, contact, which doesn't exist yet. So we've got the HTML button visible on screen in the HTML file. We've got the variable uh, in JavaScript that represents it. And we've got the event listener. Next, we need the event or the function definition. So backing up, let's see what's that stray one there. I guess I didn't put a note. Okay, that's for our function logout. Just uh, note that if you'd like and uh, fn logout because then we are defining function fn contact. So 
so the social sharing plugin was a third party plugin therefore its documentation is not at cordova.apache.org we found it over at the developers site and the documentation of how to use it is there and examples and and all of that and that plugin can be used to connect to social media or to plain old email so the syntax to connect to plain old email in the function we'll start with window dot plugins plural make sure that's an s plugins window dot plugins dot social sharing one word no capitals dot share via email and this one is capital V capital E so we have a way to use this plugin so that the user can um, determine themselves what uh, how they want to connect they can choose Twitter snapchat Instagram Facebook whatever we are saying whenever that button is pressed this is gonna connect to their email to send an email somewhere somehow the documentation says that there are several parameters that define this method it expects several things and because this developer invented it he has decided this is the order of the of the parameters and this is how you have to do it so between those parentheses I'm gonna break those actually because it'll be a little bit more readable to have them on their own line and for the moment let's write these as comments the first argument or parameter is going to be the message comma the next one is going to be the email where the message is sent comma Oh, sorry. Uh, this one is the um, the message um, subject field. The first line is what is the message itself? The message you can say message body to be more accurate. What is the body of the actual email itself? Next is well, what is the subject field of this email we're sending? Next is the to field. Who's this being sent to? And it is an array of strings. For completeness, message body is also a string. Message subject is a string. What does a string usually mean? How do we write it? quotes it's quoted so message body whatever message is being sent is going to be in quotes and the subject in quotes and then the two parameter has to be in an array so square brackets syntax in quotes comma we have a two field and we have a CC field and then after that, a BCC field. So what's CC and what's BCC? Carbon copy and blind carbon copy. So CC is uh, who else to send to? 
and this is also array of strings BCC send to others who don't know are being included. So blind carbon copy is uh, sending an email to one person and sending it to another, but they don't know who else got it. Have you ever gotten an email where on the two field there's 50 emails and you see everyone's email? It would have been smarter that they put those message, those emails in the BCC field so that we don't see each other's emails. Now, all of these that we're doing here are required, but I don't, I don't want to send a BCC. If you don't want to use the field, you can put null. So all of these, most of these, you don't have to put anything into it, but you have to include it in, the, in this order of arguments. You have to have some sort of message, comma, some sort of uh, subject, comma, someone you're sending it to, comma. You're not, maybe you don't want to CC it or BCC it to anyone, so these are going to be written as null, comma, null, comma. Because then what we could do after that is attachment. Attachment from the www folder. So any file that is in the www folder, you can attach it. Or if you dynamically create a file and such, if a person takes a photo and all of that, that can be attached. But in here we would uh, attach, we would give an attachment to the to the email, and this is a string. Next one is a success callback function. And the final one is a failure callback function. And then the final one, no final comma. So you have commas between the other parameters until this final one. So on the, on the event of the email successfully being sent, uh, we can run a, uh, a callback function, like maybe play a sound or make a pop-up that says thank you or do something. On the event of something happened, their email crashed or something happened, we, it'll run uh, the failure callback, and that can have some feedback. So these are all of the fields all of the arguments of the share via email method of the social sharing plugin. To the left of all of these, we will fill in the actual, the actual thing. So let's say, in quotes, comma, this is uh, thinking in terms of the user. The user downloaded our app they want to contact us, so think in those terms. If you're going to get an email from your user, how would you like them to, to start off? Now, the user will be able to edit any of this stuff, but you can start it off for them. You can write, for example, regarding your app. And you have very basic HTML that you can write here. You can put a break tag, for example. So automatically, the person's email, we'll see how it works in a moment, but basically the person's email screen will pop up from the app and it'll automatically have filled in regarding your app in the body. They can delete that if they want or keep it. Don't forget that comma because then the next line also in quotes and then comma is what is the subject that is going to be added to the email. We can say have it say CBDB feedback. They can change it to make it say your terrible app 
if they want. But here we're filling it in for them. And one uh, reason to do this also is email filters. If you have multiple apps out in the App Store, you could put some sort of keyword in your subject and then set up filters in your email client to capture that keyword and, and move them to the different inboxes in your email client. Next is an array. So we've got square brackets. And the uh, array has to have a, technically at least one email address in quotes. Now to test this, I would like you to put your email address that you can, that you can access right now in class. To fully test this, we're going to launch, in a moment, we're going to launch it in the device. And we're going to click the button, contact the developer. And if you've got your email address, you'll be able to test the full, the full process that you do get an email in your inbox from your own app. So I'm going to put a gibberish email here, victor at victor.biz. That's not real. Put your own e real email address here to fully test it. And technically, you could do comma and add more emails here. But I sort of feel like, why would you do that if the developer already set up the CC field? Uh, well, we just think about it like that. So. For the CC field, again, this would be an array and then a list of email addresses. So for example, uh, in the real world, the way this could be used is, you know, this is being sent over to, let's say, the, the customer service person in your company. And it's also going to be sent over to the, you know, tech support at victor.biz. So the CC field could be used to send this message to more than one person in your team. And then comma if you want another one. So uh, dev at victor.biz. These are all fake emails, so they won't really go anywhere. But if you were wanting to really test this, you would put it in, you would put it in and test it. And let's say I don't want any BCC at all, so I put null comma I really don't want anything under the CC but you you should see how it works you can keep it if you want I'll say no it's not going to go to anyone really so I do need the placeholder of null that's what the specification says you can't just ignore one of these fields you have to put a null Attachment. If I wanted no attachment, I put a null. But to fully test this, it might be fun to do this. What graphic within your project can we attach to the email? We have to start it off, first of all, with um, the, the correct path, which is www. And then any subfolder within our project is fair game. So this is the one tricky part here. Remember to put www, then slash than some sort of image. So let's see, do we have any good images? We deleted the Cordova. Uh, we, we deleted the Cordova mascot icon. Eh, maybe we should have kept it. But um, I guess there's that Ajax loader. I guess we can attach to that. If you, ha if you have any other graphic, um, try it with that graphic. But I'm going to try the Ajax loader. So www slash images because it's an images folder, and then slash ajax-loader.gif. So this one is, uh, I believe it's just one single image. You know what, here's a fun way to, to do it. Uh, I know that we've got our res images. I'm going to copy. I'm going to make a copy of one of my icons and put it into my images folder. So my 96 icon sized image inside of Android icons res. I'm going to copy that one and paste it into my images. So now I've got a a real icon, a fun icon of my project to attach.
I don't believe we can write our path to exit the WW folder to get it manually. I believe when we tested this last semester, I don't believe it let us write a path to go back out to the res folder. We can try it. But this way I know that I've got an image in my images folder, in my project folder to attach to my email. Lastly, we've got the two callbacks. Now, what I'll also do here, just for readability, I'm going to tab these things over a little, some amount, maybe so it's a little easier for you to read. This is optional, but make sure you're tabbing these past the comma. Because the last one here is function, parentheses, quotes, comma. Function, parentheses, curly braces, no final comma, no final comma, some success callback function, anonymous callback function that we can define further as success, very simply console log, what was that success object? Failure console log failure failure. So there will be either a success or a failure from trying to do this operation, running this method. And it will uh, either output simply to the console. I can be much more complex and have this call um, uh, another function that is much more complex that plays a sound. For example, failure. If the email didn't go through, I could have it run another function that plays a sound, a sad sound, and it vibrates to catch their attention that the email didn't go through. Or for the success, something else too. This is just a quick and dirty way to send some console output with an anonymous function. And all of this is our setup, which we can then save all. Since we worked with more than one file, let's do a save all, run it. This would work best on the real device. I don't think it'll work at all very well on the, on the web browser simulator. not on the simulator. So depending on the person's device, we will see this when we're dealing with cross-platform uh, app development. Depending on the person's device, this code will work on all the devices. But depending on the device, it'll look different or behave in a certain way. I've got an Android device, and we're working with Android. Um, on, um, on Android, it's going to pop up, and it's going to have the option of Gmail, because Gmail is the default email account on most Android devices. It's going to pop up in Gmail. It should fill in the fields. If I'm over on an iPhone, this same code will invoke the built-in you know, Apple Mail app and then it will pop up and let you send an email. So if the person had, had chosen a different email app, 
it should load up that chosen email app to send the email. So make sure you save all and then run it. And because we've added new stuff, because we've added a new plugin with new, uh, you know, new code, it might take a moment as usual to compile it the first time. And to fully test it, you should be sending it to your own email address to confirm that it works. In theory, yeah, any file could be reverse engineered. Any app could be reverse engineered in theory, and then, yeah, find that stuff in here. So there's always that. Nothing is quite secure always. Yeah, you can search for anything that looks like an email address. Apologies, mine uh, takes a little longer because I'm running my recorder and everything. It should come up in just a moment for me to fully test it. If yours already worked, uh, have any of you been able to go through the whole process and check it yourself? Did it work for anyone? We'll check for, uh, we'll do our break and then check for uh, proper code in a moment. Let me just confirm mine works. So here we go, finally it's loading up, I get the splash screen, I'm going to keep an eye out in my console just in case I have any errors. I go over to my um, options screen, I see a brand new button, contact us. I press contact us, I get a little pop up in my case, would you like to use Gmail or save to your drive? So I'm going to choose Gmail tab Gmail. It loads up Gmail. It automatically filled in who it's coming from, the email address assigned to this device. So from is filled in. To is filled in to the email address I put on that line. The uh, subject is filled in, CBDB feedback. The main body is filled in regarding your app. And then in my case I see attached also is my icon. Um, so regarding your app, Great job. And then I'll click the send button. This is sending message on here. The console, line 162, success OK. So it did at the very least successfully send the email based on what the code is here. It did trigger success success and this success object is just simply okay
So I always have pretty bad reception in this room. I'll check my inbox, but it should play a little sound that I got it. And that's our um, contact. We're using this third-party plugin, one aspect of it, to send an email. Um, Oh, I know why. Um, my device, I'm not connected to Wi Fi. So uh, I wasn't connected on Wi Fi to it right there, so oh, there it is. So I will send that. Uh, but let's um, pause for our first break and check our code. Uh, at 7.45, we'll take a break until 7.55. If it, the code didn't quite work, call me over. And if it, uh, if it did, take a break.